everyone. So recently on Instagram, I asked you guys what kind of videos you would like to see from me. And surprisingly to me, the overwhelming majority was a get ready with me kind of video. I thought maybe you guys didn't like them as much, but I'm happy to do that. And I thought I would just take you through some of the products I've been using recently. I don't know how it works with y'all, but I kind of like, well, obviously because of what I do, I have a lot of makeup products to play with, but I do tend to fixate on a few products and use them for, you know, all the, like repeatedly many days in a row. Then I'll move on to something else, maybe a week or a month later, but this is what I'm obsessed with lately. So let's just go. A lot of you have been asking, I feel like I've told you, but just to remind you, I am loving the Super Goop Unseen Sunscreen, one of the few that doesn't make me break out. So that is on and let's get started with I guess it's foundation. It's the Charlotte Tilbury Light Wonder Youth Boosting Perfect Skin Foundation. Um, I used to use this as almost, not a primer, I'm not a big primer person, but almost like a, a underlayer to something a little more heavier coverage, but uh, my skin has been doing really well lately. So I'm doing something I haven't done in a really long time. I squeeze them out on my fingers and I put it on directly with my fingers. And I know this is not a revolutionary concept when applying makeup, but I have become so ingrained to reach for a brush. I almost just like this feeling of having it on my fingers, but it gives a really nice natural coverage. I do prefer generally using a brush because now it's everywhere, but it gives, it, I will say it does give more even coverage perhaps a little less, more natural coverage. If you want a product to give more full coverage, by the way, and some of us do, or even if I wanted to go back over some areas for a little more heavy coverage, a brush like a flat topped kabuki style brush does give more coverage. A beauty blender tends to sheer it out even more. That's generally, you know, if there was like a spectrum of coverage, Using a beauty blender would be the sheerest. Fingers is kind of in the middle. Brush would give you the more pigmented, more coverage version. You know, I have stopped looking to foundation to cover everything. That's not what foundation is for. I have to remind myself that the word foundation means literally the base of which you're building everything on. So it's just to even out skin tone, maybe add glow, remove glow, depending on the foundation you're using. Um, this one is supposed to boost my youth, but if I want to actually cover blemishes, which I do, that's what concealer is for, to conceal. Sometimes it's so obvious, but when I'm, I just kind of forget sometimes specifically what they're made, what the makeup products are for. So if you're a regular viewer, this is the regular, nothing changes here, the MAC Prep and Prime Highlighter Pen, used to correct any blue tones. Um, I do like using the Tatcha Pearl, but that requires a little more effort to pat, 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 and I'm not, I'm kind of in, not in a hurry, but this is just my fast makeup routine. And then for blemishes, I've been using the Derma Blend um, Smooth Liquid Camo. It is medium coverage. Uh, it has, it holds up really well in this hot, climate. Now for that, I don't want to lose the coverage. So I am going to use a brush. This is a Sigma brush. I do love them. And it is made specifically, I think for concealer. Yep. It's a concealer blend brush. And I'm going to pat that into the areas I need it. Now that the MAC Prep and Prime has been sitting for a while, it kind of thickens almost and gets a little more opaque as you let it congeal on your face. I'm just going to pat that in with the same brush, obviously concentrating it in that inner corner where I get the darker tones. And then to lighten and brighten my under eyes, I get less sleep in the summer than during the regular school year. Shane, my youngest, just finished a uh, football workouts. This is a beauty sponge. It's damp. And that does sheer it out a little bit. I don't want heavy coverage under my eyes, not with all the fine lines going on there. And I will, by the way, bring this across my lid to use as a primer. Anyway, um, my youngest son, Shane, just finished his football workouts for summer and the varsity football players 
Work out every Monday through Thursday from 6.15 in the morning till 7.45, which means Shane leaves the house about 5.45, 5.50 in the morning. And I, you know, he's old enough, he's going to his senior year, that I do not get up with him and ensure that he is up. But to say that I sleep through that every morning would be a lie. So I kind of wake up, say goodbye to him as he's leaving, and then I go back to sleep for a little while. But I also tend to stay up later in the summer, like midnight, so I'm really not getting great sleep. Once the school year kicks in, we will get back into a normal routine and I will actually get to sleep later and probably get more sleep. Okay, even though this is a sort of quick routine, I'm babbling so it makes it longer, I always set my under eyes with a powder. My powder of choice is the Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder. That is because it's hot outside and I do close my eyes so this doesn't get in my eyes. And when I wear sunglasses, which is anytime I set foot outside of the house, during daylight hours, I get sweaty under my sunglasses and this helps the concealer to not run down my face. So there you go. So that is done. And then I'm gonna set the rest of my face with this guy, the Hourglass Ambient, what is this? Lumin ambient Lighting Powder and Luminous Light. It could be any powder. It's, it's really whatever is handy. If I want a little more coverage, I'll reach for either the Charlotte Tilbury press powder or um, my old standby, the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish in Natural, which is almost out, actually. Might be time to back to MAC it. Bronzer, I've, I have a gajillion bronzers. This is what I've been reaching for for the month, is this duo, the Charlotte Tilbury Film Star, what is it Bronze and Glow? And this brush from It Cosmetics, it's angled and fluffy, so it kind of is like a twofer, bronze and contour all at once. At the beginning of the summer, I was really into the fake tan thing, and then I just kind of stopped. I'm not, I can't be bothered with it. We're about to go, by the time you see this, we'll already have been and gone, but we're about to go on a family vacation where I will be in a bathing suit for hopefully all of it, if the weather permits, and I will be going for the fake tan then because the thought of exposing that much flesh to sunlight in its natural state is slightly frightening. Plus a good spray tan, which I'm gonna start with and then maybe add to it with my self tan. Uh, hides a multitude of things like spider veins, cellulite. You know, anything you need to do to feel more confident in a bathing suit, I say you go for it. Okay, as for highlighter, I just use the other side. I know this is more than what most people do, obviously. Um, but if I'm just doing this in my bathroom by myself without y'all watching, so to speak, really like six, seven minutes and I'm done. And then for blush, one of you paid me the nicest compliment about this blush when I was wearing it in a recent video, so I've been wearing it nonstop. Um, it's the Tarte Amazonian Clay in the shade Exposed. Um, so thank you to whomever that was who said it looked very natural and like I wasn't wearing blush at all, yet I looked really nice in it. Um, yeah, a compliment will stick with ya. That's the face. Let's get into the eyes. A quick brush of the brows. And then, I'm not gonna film this part. I'm just gonna quickly fill in the, kind of the tail end with my goof proof. It's nice and thick on the end there, so I can just kinda draw it on real fast. And hold them in place. Does my eyebrows move? Like they are like real hair. They will move. I don't know if anybody else's do this. Aren't I lucky? Huda Beauty Smoky Obsessions. Depending on how much of a hurry I'm in, it's either two shadows or three. Let's just stick with. Now let's do the full Monty. So I start with this orangey shade. It's not really orange, but it kind of looks orangey in the top middle row there. I'm sure there's a better description for what it is, but big fluffy brush. It says Sigma E40, a MAC 224, what have you. I don't really try all that hard. I do a little below the crease, a little above the crease, in the socket, kind of just gently smack it on. Then for just a little bit more precision, like a MAC 217 or the Sigma E, I think I know by now, I think it's 25, I go for the same middle, but the lowest one, and just hold it so that it's, how do I describe this? 
it's kind of shaped like a paddle. So make sure it's thinnest, if you're holding it horizontally, it's thinnest horizontally and just kind of stick it in that socket real lightly just for a little definition. We can always go back and add more, but it's really one of those things that's probably not necessary. And whatever's left on the brush, look up when you do this, just run it under your eyes. It adds a little definition and it actually kind of helps stop the uh, eyeliner that we're gonna put on later transfer onto your lower lids. Now my favorite part, for this you'll need a very special tool. Um, I use my middle finger, but I'm not gonna hold that one up by itself. And I just use the lower right corner color. I don't know what that's called. Smoosh it in there. I've read somewhere that with Huda Beauty, the metallic shimmery shades do best by using a finger. And they are absolutely right. I just press that all over my lid, smoosh it into the corner. If it goes up into the crease, I don't care. That's it. If I'm really in a super hurry, I, this is the only thing I do. I skip the other shades and just slap this sucker on. It just adds a nice gleam to your eyelid without, whoops, went a little high there. Let's fix that. This is, I'm right, I'm not right-handed, so this is awkward, okay. Um, just a nice sheen, without looking overly done. Done. Slap on some eyeliner. Lately, I've been reach, I I, I'm not partial to a particular eyeliner. For drugstore, though, I really do like the L'Oreal Invaluable or the Flower Beauty in the Automatic. Um, for higher end, I do like the Urban Decay 24-7 Glide On. It tends to stay creamy for a long time in the pencil, and I'm using the shade Demolition. And I hold it sideways, I anchor my hand with my pinky, and I very lightly skim it along the lash line. And I do switch hands. I know not everybody does that. I think it's a lefty thing. When you are a lefty trying to get along in a right-handed world, we do a lot of things with both hands. Um, should have done this first. I'm gonna curl my lashes. Should have done that before the eyeliner, but Oh well. Mascara I've been using lately is the Clinique High Impact Mascara. I kind of rotate through quite a few. I really like this brush on my lower lashes. Tilt your head down for low, tilt your head up for higher, the upper lashes. So down for lower lashes. This lifts the lashes away from your face. So you are less likely to sm sm I just did it, to smudge it all over your Face. Actually, it's just clumped onto there. Okay, all better. I don't think I actually finished telling you why I like this mascara. I got a little distracted. I like the brush, it really grips the lashes. So that's why, and I like the mascara itself and it doesn't flake on me. It's very black, which I like, so there you go. Okay, then to seal this all in, so what I, I feel like when I spray my face with setting mist, I'm really just using hairspray on my face. Is that really what we're doing? I don't know. This is the Urban Decay Chill. It's nice and cold. Something that it is not outside. Also should have done this before the mascara, but whatever. Okay, lips. I just rotate through whatever is kind of handy. Um, again, I've rediscovered my love for the Dior Lip Addict in Balm in Hollow Pink. Isn't that pretty? I've also been using a lot of various lip glosses. Um, here's an old fave, the Neutrogena. Just adds a little more shine, a little more color. Um, I've also been using that Fenty Beauty one a lot, but it's actually in my purse and I didn't think to bring it here. Um, I love this gloss. It's probably my all time favorite gloss on par with any other gloss I love. The only thing I don't like about this should email Neutrogena, not like they care, but the applicator is kind of hard to get back in. Like, you gotta, but don't worry, I've never broken one, they're pretty sturdy. All right, that's the finished look. The only thing that I would do differently to leave the house is take the headband off. I'd probably just leave my hair in a messy ponytail because it's 150 degrees outside. Okay, I'm exaggerating. It's probably only 110. That is my go-to makeup look for the last few weeks. I'm really enjoying it. It's hold, it holds up pretty well. I will say, if you're looking for long wear, this lasts a good eight hours and then you're kinda done. So, um, you know, this is not like Estee Lauder double wear. It's very light coverage, I would say. 
By the way, I'm wearing it in the shade Fair 2 Up 1 from my usual 1. It's very exciting. But I like the coverage and you know, if you want it to last a little longer, you could use a primer or you could layer some more stuff on top of it, but it feels really nice in um, this kind of weather. So that's it for this look. Let me know if you enjoy this video. I always like getting video ideas from you. I prefer to make those kind of videos, frankly. I don't wanna come up with what you want. I want to know what you want. So please let me know in the comments below what sorts of things would you like to watch in the coming months and I will do my best to make those requests happen. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.